Welcome back to the Endocrine System on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be looking at the final hormone that is the sixth hormone that is released by the anterior pituitary gland, and that is the hormone prolactin. Now, before we go into the functions of prolactin, and there's really one major one, I want to do a very brief review of all of the five other hormones. Now, this isn't going to take very long, but I want to point out one important thing that you may not have thought about. If we look at growth hormone, so human growth hormone or somatotropin, Yes, it has all these effects on adipose and skeletal muscle and bone, but notice it causes the release of another hormone, that is the insulin-like growth factors such as IGF-1. Okay. Thyroid-stimulating hormone causes the release of thyroid hormones. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, or corticotropin, whatever you want to call it, causes the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands. These uh, gonadotropins, FSH and LH, cause the release of other hormones, and again, that depends on which uh, sex you are. Okay, females, you'll see estradiol and progesterone mainly, and in males, you'll have testosterone and dihydrotestosterone mainly. Prolactin is a hormone that is released by the anterior pituitary, but one major way that prolactin differs in its function is it does not trigger the release of another hormone. Okay. Prolactin does not trigger the release of another hormone. So all five of these others that we looked at, growth hormone, thyroid hormone, cortisol, uh, these sex steroids, okay, these are all going to be examples of hormone-induced hormone release because another hormone triggered the release of that hormone. For example, adrenocorticotropic hormone is a hormone, triggers the release of cortisol, a hormone. So this is hormone-induced hormone release. Prolactin is not hormone-induced hormone release. Prolactin does not cause the synthesis and release of a hormone. It actually causes the synthesis of milk, which we actually call milk biogenesis. Okay? Now, prolactin normally, in a person who's not pregnant, and of course we're talking about females there, um, is going to be present at a pretty low level. It's not that it doesn't exist. It still exists in the blood. It's just at a very low baseline level. However, um, especially late in pregnancy, closer to the time of birth, prolactin levels are going to sharply become elevated, and we need to understand the reason why. Okay? Prolactin's goal is going to be milk biogenesis. So the breast tissue, that is the mammary glands, are going to have to start manufacturing milk. And why are they going to have to do that? Because presumably when this woman gives birth, she's going to breastfeed her child. And the milk, of course, is going to serve as nutrients, food basically, for that child's development. Okay? So before we get into the functions and all that and everything, let's talk about how prolactin is released. And it's going to be the same story that we've seen all along. Okay? So here's our hypothalamus up here. Okay. Our hypothalamus can generate this hormone called PRH, prolactin-releasing hormone. And prolactin-releasing hormone can then enter this network of blood vessels called the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. This portal system carries prolactin-releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary gland, where it triggers the release of prolactin into the blood. And so prolactin will go throughout the general circulation, and the major site of activity is going to be at the mammary glands. Now, in the next video, we're going to be doing a study of the anatomy of the breast tissue, but it suffices to say right now, inside the breast, there are glands called mammary glands, and they're composed of structures called lobules. And these lobules are basically a lot of exocrine glands. They're modified apocrine glands, actually, to be specific. And what prolactin will do is it'll bind to receptors there, and it will trigger these glands, which are exocrine, by the way, to start making milk. And this process where milk is being made initially is called lactation. Okay? So at some point, the woman starts making milk in the breast tissue. That process is called lactation. Now again, in the follow-up video where we go over more of the anatomy, we're going to be talking about what things are involved in lactation. But just to give you a heads up, you got to think, what does the infant need? Well, the infant's going to need amino acids for growth, right? So to get the amino acids, the milk is going to have proteins in it. A couple of the common ones are going to be casein protein, and there's also going to be lactalbumin, okay, and even some whey protein, believe it or not. 
And also there's got to be some carbohydrates like glucose so that the infant can perform glycolysis. Well, the glucose is actually provided in the form of a disaccharide called lactose. So there's also vitamins and minerals and all sorts of goodies in here that are going to nourish the growing infant. But the initial synthesis of that milk is called lactation. Okay? Now I want to make something perfectly clear. Prolactin only triggers the synthesis of the milk. Okay? It does not allow the milk to be what we call ejected, which would actually be uh, what allows the infant to obtain that milk. Okay? It is not ejected. It is only synthesized by prolactin. So unless you have some other hormone, which we're going to talk about in a couple minutes, the milk will just sit there. Even if the baby starts suckling without this other hormone called oxytocin, that milk just sits there. Okay? All prolactin does is trigger the synthesis of it. Okay? Now another term I'm going to mention in the next video, but I'll actually briefly mention it here, is galactopoiesis. Okay, galactopoiesis is a follow-up to lactation. So if you think about the milk that's actually generated inside the mammary glands here, um, it doesn't stay good indefinitely. In fact, it can actually go rancid, even inside the breast tissue. So if it's not used, or even if some of it is used and there's a little bit left over, you have to have a way to get rid of the leftovers but also to make new milk. So galactopoiesis is something we talk about happening after initial lactation. And really galactopoiesis is just the removal of old milk and the synthesis of new milk to replace it. Okay? So these terms go together well. And so again, the major goal of prolactin is only to facilitate the synthesis of milk, okay? which is lactation. It does not trigger the release of milk the ejection of the milk. It does not do that. So let's suppose that this woman has an infant and this woman wants to breastfeed the infant. Well, to breastfeed the infant, she has to have what's called a milk ejection or a milk letdown reflex. Okay? This is basically where the milk is going to be squirted out through the nipple, which of course is going to have a hole in it that's going to allow milk to be ejected from it. And then of course the infant is going to suckle and is going to receive that milk. I think that's obvious to everybody. But in order to get the, this reflex right here, milk ejection or letdown, whatever you want to call it, you have to have another hormone here. Now, we're going to have a separate video where we talk about oxytocin. Um, oxytocin is a hormone that is made in the hypothalamus, and then it's sent to the posterior pituitary gland. So this is actually not an anterior pituitary hormone. This is one of our two major posterior pituitary hormones. But in any case, oxytocin will be released, and it will come over here and it will trigger the milk ejection reflex. Okay, And then the baby will be able to receive that milk. So what we say about oxytocin is it's permissive with prolactin or vice versa. In other words, you have to have oxytocin to get the full effect of prolactin. That's because, again, with prolactin, it's only to trigger the synthesis of the milk. If you don't have oxytocin to eject it, it does no good. Likewise, if you had no prolactin, even if you had oxytocin without prolactin, you wouldn't be able to synthesize the milk in the first place. So these two hormones actually work together, not necessarily synergistically, but permissively. One cannot function without the other, and that's what permissivity in hormones actually means. Okay? Um, a couple other things I want to mention. Um, one is about the negative feedback. Um, prolactin actually, just like all the other anterior pituitary hormones, can come back here and inhibit the release of prolactin releasing hormone, which again makes sense. It's a form of feedback inhibition because the prolactin levels start to become elevated too much so, they can come back here and inhibit the release of PRH, which then, if PRH is not released to the anterior pituitary, then prolactin is not released from it. And so that will lower prolactin levels back down to baseline. The other thing I wanted to mention about this process of breastfeeding, um, and I'll talk about this more in the, in the next video as well, uh, but this is actually an unintuitive thing. When babies are suckling at the nipple, it's actually not that they're sucking on it and drawing the milk out of the breast. Okay? Kind of like if you were drinking a milkshake out of a straw. The way you actually drink out of a straw is you, you suck on the straw and create a negative pressure, a partial vacuum in your mouth, which draws the fluid up. That is actually not how babies uh, actually receive the milk. Contrary to popular belief, what's actually happening here inside the breast tissue 
is the duct work that leads out to the nipple actually has smooth muscle in it. And actually what's happening is that smooth muscle is contracting almost like peristalsis that you would see in the GI tract. And it's actually squirting the milk out. Squirting the milk out. Okay. So when the, when the woman puts the infant up to her breast to breastfeed, okay, it sends signals to the brain that say, hey, we're breastfeeding, we need to get some oxytocin release now. And so then oxytocin is released, this all happens extremely rapidly, and then that oxytocin triggers that squirting of the milk. Okay. So it's actually not like you're drinking out of a straw. It's not that the baby is actually sucking on it and drawing the fluid out through a negative pressure or a partial vacuum. It's actually a squirting action that actually happens intrinsically in the breast. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next video when we look at the anatomy of the mammary glands. Okay. But hopefully this gave you a good understanding of what prolactin does and how it's permissive with oxytocin and one cannot function without the other. Just remember, prolactin is an anterior pituitary hormone. Oxytocin is not. It is a posterior pituitary hormone. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.